All right, so now we're going to be finding the x and y intercepts. All right, so we're going to find the x and y intercepts of that line. So let's try and do that. All right, so the x intercept, we this is a review, is right there at 2, 0, right? Intercepts are points. So that's the x intercept. And then we're going to do the y intercept, which is right there. And the y intercept is the point. 0, negative 6, right? So x-intercept, where it crosses the x-axis. The y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, the line crosses. Okay, now, this on the left is what we've been doing. This is called slope-intercept form. Now, the reason I made you learn that is there's another form of a function, and this is called standard form. Now, what you see on the right in blue is the exact same line. That's the same line, just written in a different form. Now, look at the differences, right? In slope-intercept, we've always had y over there all by itself. Now, we're going to have x and y on the same side, and that has some advantages in some situations, and we're going to go over those in the next few lessons. All right, so let's make sure we all can do find the x and y intercepts, right? So the y intercept is the one that starts with zero. The x intercept is the one that ends in zero, always, okay? Do it again. The y intercept is where it crosses the y axis. The line crosses the y axis. Oh, let's be consistent and use the same color. All right, so the red, I did the y in red, right, where it crosses the y-axis is right there, and this is 0, 6, and the x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis, and that is right there, and that is 6, 0, right? So you can't just put 6. Look at that, right, because this x-intercept and the y-intercept are very different. All right, so when you see ax plus by equals c, that's called standard form, all right? So I want you to look at these two equations up there and tell me which one's in standard form. Hopefully you're saying that one. Now what's a? a, it's an ax plus by equals c, all right? So a was three, what's b? b is one, right? That's what we don't write that, and c was seven. Turns out those are the same line. So what's this one called? It's called standard form. What's the old form called? Slope intercept, right? Slope intercept is where you see the slope and part of the y-intercept. Let's do it again. Which one is which? All right, so on the left is called slope intercept, but I asked you which one is in standard. And in standard form is this one. What's A? A is 3. What's B? B is negative 2, right, because it's plus BY. So how do you get a minus? It's negative. And C here is 8. Again, these are the exact same line on a graph. Exact same line in different forms. All right, so we want to find the X and Y intercepts of this line. Now, right, because we have a way to graph when we're in slope intercept, right? But no, look at this. We don't know what the slope is. We don't know. The slope is not this two. It is not, okay? And we do not know the y-intercept. So we're going to right away. So what we're going to do is make, remember that intercepts either start, right? Y-intercepts start with zero. X-intercepts end with zero. So I'm going to find the y-intercept first. So in every y-intercept, x is 0. So we're going to go 2 times 0 plus y equals 8. 2 times 0 is what? 0. So you get y equals 8. So what's the y-intercept? But don't stop there ever. The y-intercept is 0, 8. Okay. Now, the x-intercept is where y equals 0. So we go 2x plus 0. We've made the y equals 0. Now we have to solve that equation. That goes away, but now you have 2x equals 8, right? Divide both sides. When x is being multiplied, you divide x equals 4. Don't stop there. The x-intercept is 4, 0, an ordered pair. That's what you're doing today. 
Okay, so let's do this again. Let's find the y-intercept first. So the y-intercept occurs where x, the x, and when you see x and y here, that's the x and y coordinate on the graph. So the x coordinate is 0. So we get negative 3 times 0 plus 2y equals 12. What's negative 3 times 0? 0. It crosses out. I have 2y equals 12. How can I get y by itself? Divide both sides by 2. So y equals 6. I'm going to run out of room here. y equals 6. So the y-intercept is 0, 6. All right, find the x-intercept. So the x-intercept, you make y equal to 0. So negative 3x plus 2 times 0. Right, there's y. 2 times 0 is 0. That crosses out. I have negative 3x equals 12. Divide both sides by negative 3. x equals negative 4. So what is the x-intercept? Negative 4, 0. Now notice, right? You cannot see 0, 6 anywhere. You might have thought from the first one, because it was easy, that this 8 was that. It is in that very specific case. But you can't see the x-intercept or the y-intercept. And you, none of you, the slope here, you can't see either. Okay, Slope here, so you are going to find the intercepts this way. There is no other way. All right, so we're going to be finding the x and y-intercepts every single time here. Let's start with the y-intercept. I'm going to be consistent. Here we go. And you can't abbreviate that y. That y is y-coordinate. We're finding y-intercept. So for a y-intercept, the x-coordinate, that thing, is 0. Back 6 times 0 is 0. That goes away. You have negative 2y equals 18. Divide both sides by negative 2. y equals negative 9. The y-intercept is 0, negative 9. An intercept is a point, not a number. Now we're going to find the x-intercept. The x-intercept, the y-coordinate is equal to 0. 6x equals 18. Divide by 6. x equals 3. The x-intercept is 3, 0. Now, tomorrow's, or the next lesson, you will graph these. right? And you will graph these. And 6, 7, 8, negative 9. And then draw a line through them really will be the same thing over again. And that's the fastest way to graph things that when they're in standard form. And that's why we're learning this. To graph things in standard form, the, you, could, you could make a t-table and evaluate that for vi different values of x and y. It would be very tedious because x and y are on the same side. All right, you could change it over into slope-intercept form. We'll learn how to do that. But the fastest way to graph that is what you see on the screen. All right, so just make sure that when we get fractions, we can handle that. So y-intercept, so the y-intercept, you make x equal to 0. 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 7, y equals 2. Divide by negative 7, y equals negative 2 sevenths. What's that? Yeah, that's 0 comma negative 2 sevenths. Yes, that's possible. x-intercept. Right, you make y equal to 0. 3x equals 2. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 2 thirds. So the x intercept, let's write that. x equals 2 thirds. The x intercept is 2 thirds 0. Now, that may look horrible to you, but you could graph that. Let's, I'm going to make a big, there's positive 1 and there's negative 1. All right, so 2 thirds 0 would be 2 thirds of the way to 1. All right, that's 1. And for the y-intercept, negative 2 sevenths, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it would be 2 sevenths the way down to negative 1, and the line would look like that. Now, we hardly ever do that because we were, were trying to make things easy for you. But these intercepts can contain fractions. Okay, so let's do another one that's going to contain some fractions. So y-intercept. We're going to make x equal to 0. So that goes away. Divide both sides by 4. We get 14 fourths. Not allowed to leave it. You've got to simplify your fractions. So y equals 7 halves. Now, 7 halves is perfectly good. You could write 0, 7 halves. But if you had to put it in, make a graph of that, that would be a pain in the butt to deal with. Remember, 6 halves is 3. So if you had to graph that on a, 
coordinate plane, you'd probably want to change that to 0, 3 and a half, which is halfway between 3 and 4. So there's a good time to change something to a mixed number. Very, right? You don't have to. Uh, that is a correct answer, 0, 7 halves. But 0, 3 and a half is easier to graph. X-intercept. You make y equal to zero. I'm being sloppy, going too fast. So four times zero is zero. Divide both sides by negative two. X equals negative seven. So this one didn't have a fraction. It's just negative seven, zero. All right. All right, so now I want you to do the same thing. Now this is in slope intercept, right? Now what we are learning today, you're learning because of standard form. But it would work, it would have worked on the old ones we did as well. So, right, so the y intercept, x equals 0. So y equals 3 times 0 minus 9. Well, y equals negative 9, y intercept is 0, negative 9. Right, that was a total waste of time because this is slope intercept, right? You can just look at it, but that, you have to know that that's slope intercept and that when it's in slope intercept form, that's the y intercept. Now, if you, you do this work, it's not wrong, and that's the point of this screen. Now, what you do have to find, you do this work to find the x-intercept here, right? We never found the x-intercept back, uh, back in those old units when we were doing slope-intercept form. Why? Because we didn't need it. We had the slope, but you could find the x-intercept here. So for the x-intercept, y equals 0. So y equals 3x minus 9. Add 9 to both sides. 9 equals 3x, divide both sides by 3, and 3 equals x, so the x-intercept here is 3, 0. All right, so we're going to practice. All right, so we're going to find the y-intercept first. If you want to abbreviate there as the shortest abbreviation you're allowed, because that is the y-coordinate. That we're finding a y-intercept. So a y-intercept, the x-coordinate is 0. That goes away. Divide both sides by 3. y is 5. The y-intercept is 0, 5. You tell me if y-intercept is a number like 5, you're going to get no points on the test. x-intercept, the y-coordinate is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. That goes away. You divide by 2. x equals 15 halves, right, which is fine. But 14 halves is 7, so this is 7 and a half, 0, if you had to plot it, halfway between 7 and 8. All right, so now look at that. So this is in slope-intercept. How do we know that? Y is by itself. Okay, this last one is in what form? It is in standard, right? Standard is AX plus BY equals C. Slope-intercept is Y equals MX plus B. Why am I saying that? Because when you don't need to do what we this lesson today to find the y-intercept here. It's 0, negative 3. You just look, right? It's in slope-intercept. Now, to find the x-intercept, we never used this when we were back in the slope-intercept days because we had the slope. But you could do it. So here it is, 0. y always equals 0 for every x-intercept. So 0 equals 1 half x minus 3. Add 3 to both sides. 3 equals 1 half x. Right? Multiply both sides by the reciprocal of a fraction coefficient. And we get 2 over 1 times 3 equals x. x equals 6. The x-intercept here is 6, 0. Right? Tomorrow, you'll take that 6, 0 and plot it. You, you'll take that y-intercept, 0, negative 3, and you will draw this line. And this line has a slope of 1 half. Oops, I was too quick there because it's over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2. So it has a slope of a positive 1 half. Final question. All right, so y-intercept, x equal to 0. Divide both sides by negative 3. Oops, I'm going too sloppy here. All right, so negative 5 over negative 3 is 5 thirds. So this is 0, 1, and 2 thirds, right? 3 thirds is 1. 5 thirds is 1 and 2 thirds. X-intercept. All right, the Y equals 0. Divide both sides by 2. 
x equals negative 5 halves. Well, negative 4 halves is negative 2. So this is negative 2 and a half, 0. Good luck on the homework.